A patient is scheduled for radiographic examination which of following x-ray component it is responsible for generating the x-ray photon. The answer would be anode. Now why anode? So in an x-ray tube an anode it is responsible for generating the x-ray photons. So when a high energy electrons so suppose electrons from the cathode they strike the anode so when high energy electron from cathode they strike the anode they interact with the target material in the anode producing producing the x-ray photon So think of cathode as a as a water tap. So this water tap would release a stream of tiny particles that are known as known as electrons. So similar to how a tap that releases water when you turn it on. The filament it is the filament is like a heating element in old style light bulb. So it is it is responsible for producing so it is responsible for producing these electrons when it gets heated like how the filament in the light bulbs it gets hot and it produces light so a node uh, you can consider it like a like a target board when the throw arrows when you throw arrows at these board it will produce a flash of lights so in case of x-ray the electrons uh, that were relieved from cathode they hit the anode when they hit they produce x-rays so the anode it is the x-ray component that is responsible for generating x-ray photons so when high energy electrons from cathode they strike the anode x rays are produced through interaction with uh, the material so that is why your uh, the component that is responsible for generating x ray photon it's the anode so answer would be anode moving to next question in which of in which interaction uh, b- between x ray and matter is the incident x-ray photon completely absorbed resulting in ejection of electron from inner shell of uh, atom so it's it's the photoelectric effect so you can uh, you can so imagine you have a you have a small closed box with a tiny window inside the box and there is a bouncing ball so the bouncy ball it will represents the inner shell electron so you have a larger ball in your hand so if you throw a big ball that is the, that would be the x ray photon at the window it hits the window and it it bounces back so that represents scattering or no interaction now throw big ball harder so this time when it hits the window the window will open and the inner ball uh, this inner ball will get out of out of the box 
so this is like the photoelectric effect so the x-ray photon so the big ball it is absorbed and it kicks the inner shell electron out of its place whereas the compton effect would be if you uh, if you throw the big ball uh, really really hard at the window it break the window and the piece and the pieces that may fall out so in in the photoelectric effect the x ray photon will give all its energy to the innermost shell of the atom just like throwing the big ball with enough force to open the window and send the bouncy ball flying so in the photoelectric effect an x ray photon gives its energy to the inner shell electron uh, that causes it to leave from the uh, leave the atom so that's the that's the photoelectric effect uh, the interaction between between the x rays and matter involving the scattering of x ray photons without a change in wavelength it's the coherent scattering also known as thomson scattering so uh, you can remember this by imagine in a quiet room with friends you both whisper to each other let let's here is my friend and there is other there are two friends uh, the your friend whispers softly to you and you whisper back a uh, softly using the same words so the x ray photon here uh, would enter the atom whisper back by sending the x ray photon in a different direction but but still the same x ray photon but it's the same x ray photon just like in your quiet conversation nothing changes the words so the x ray uh, photon it keeps its original energy and it does not change its wavelength so that will be the best example of of the coherent scattering what is bremsstrong radiation so bremsstrong radiation refers to electromagnetic radiation emitted when charged particles such as electrons they are accelerated or decelerated by electric field of atomic nuclei so imagine you have a fast moving car on the road and suddenly uh, you see a traffic and you apply brakes so as the car slow down uh, that means it will decelerate rapidly that releases energy in form of sound uh, like uh, like screeching sounds you can uh, notice due to these are sounds that are produced due to the brakes in same way when fast moving electrons it comes to positive charge in nucleus of atom they slow down and uh, during this uh, dec uh, during this uh, deceleration they emit they will emit x ray radiation so these radiation they are known as bremsstrahl long radiation so that is why the answer would be b now which lesions does not commonly uh, represents a soft bubble or honeycomb appearance uh, the answer would be fibrous dysplasia fibrous dysplasia does not have uh, presents with a soap bubble appearance or honeycomb appearance they appear 
as a ground glass appearance so this this appearance uh, would be uh, would be ground glassy or cloudy pattern on the radiograph so the uh, the bone you will see here would be hazy poorly defined and somewhat granular appearance and it does not represents the resembles the saw bubble or honeycomb appearance now what is honeycomb appearance or saw bubble appearance the saw bubble radiolucency it refers to the radiographic pattern when there are multiple when you will see uh, when you will see multiple so when you will see multiple round or irregular shaped dark areas that are seen seen with the well defined borders so that represents a saw bubble in a soapy solution uh, so the translucent area they are typically larger and may have a irregular shape so the, they may represent large cystic or fluid filled spaces within the tissue whereas the honeycomb appearance it is characterized by a small uniform round translucent area that are closed packed together just like the cells of honeycomb uh, the honeycomb pattern they are typically smaller and more uniform in size they are separated by thin bony partition or septa so your answer would be Uh, in which lesion does not present with the saw bubble or honeycomb appearance uh, the uh, fibrous dysplasia where ground glass appearance is seen uh, when should bite wing first be obtained for typical child well we know the bite wing they are most commonly bite wings we know they are commonly used in dentistry uh, to assess the contact points between the adjacent and detect any cavities so in order to uh, obtain accurate bite wing it is necessary to wait until there are until there are stabilized contacts between the posterior teeth which of following is the least radio sensitive organ in field of typical dental x-ray well the organs of high sensitivity they are lymphoid organs gonads bone marrow and intestine and the medium sensitivity they are skin growing bone connective tissues kidney liver and thyroid so out of them the answer would be d uh, the tissues that are of least sensitivity they are brain muscles spinal so remember the muscles and nerve cells they are of lee sensitivity whereas lymphocytes spermatogonia erythroblast they are of high sensitivity there are several methods for obtaining radiograph information in patient who had a limited mouth opening due to trismus Uh, which of following method would be best well the panoramic radiograph they are obtained using a panoramic x-ray machine so this machine would provide a wide view of entire mouth including the upper and lower jaws teeth and supporting structures all in one image so the mouth does not need to be open wide for this type of x-ray uh, which would mate make it suitable for individual with the limited mouth opening or with the trismus uh option lateral cephalometry uh, well uh, well the this uh, cephalometry it is primarily used for the orthodontic and orthognathic surgery assessment and treatment planning so it is just a side profile of the patient face including skull jaw and soft tissue 
so that allows the orthodontist to assess the relation and alignment of facial bone and the teeth so the best answer here would be panoramic film uh, when the frankfurt plane it is tipped up while taking a panoramic image the image obtained will show a square of mandible and palate superimposed over maxillary teeth so the answer would be maxillary teeth here so this is option a b c and d so the frankfurt plane it is an imaginary plane that is ensure that patient head it is properly positioned if it is tilted upward it can affect the alignment of x ray causing the lower jaw and the upper jaw to appear as they are square off and overlap each other in the x ray according to the basic principle of paralleling technique the film it is placed uh, the film should be placed so this one is the paralleling technique the film it is placed parallel to long axis of the tooth the central ray of x ray it is directed so this central x ray it is directed perpendicular to film and long axis of teeth so this is the a uh, paralleling technique so answer is parallel and perpendicular a 25 years old male reported with missing maxillary canine so you can see in this uh, there is missing a canine canine is here and you can see this radiolucency with the borders that are attached to cement enamel junction of impacted canine Uh, so the most probable diagnosis could be it is dentigerous well it is dentigerous cyst so we know that dentigerous cyst they are formed around crown of impacted or unerupted teeth in this case it is likely that maxillary canine it does not it not uh, properly erupt and it it will become impacted that would lead to formation of dentigerous cyst uh during the preoperative treatment planning of implant in edentulous patient panoramic uh, uh radiograph it would provide so panoramic uh, uh, radiography it would provide uh information on the position of the inferior alveolar canal when placing a implant in the edentulous uh, individual so that is a, a critical information because the position of the inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar canal it determines the uh, location of inferior alveolar nerve so avoiding damage to this nerve it is essential during the implant placement to prevent the sensory distribution in the lip and the chin area a 25 year old patient he met with accident and presented with swelling on the right side of face and he was unable to move the mandible laterally the radiograph examination would include which of following so the panoramic images would be the answer that would uh, provide a better and broader view of the entire maxillofacial region so this one uh, figure is the panoramic imaging uh, that can help to identify fracture dislocation uh, and other injuries to the jaw and facial bone it is useful to assess the overall condition of mandible and adjacent structure in case of trauma
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच टाइप ऑफ रेडियोग्राफ शो कंडाइलर हेड ओरिएंटेशन एंड फेशियल ए सिमेट्री इट्स द ओ पी जी ओ पी जी इट इज ऑर्थोपेंटोग्राम इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज पेनोरामिक रेडियोग्राफ दैट प्रोवाइड्स अ व्यू ऑफ इंटायर मैगजिलो फेशियल रीजन इंक्लूडिंग कंडाइलर हेड्स ऑफ द मैंडिबल and useful for orientation of the condylar heads and can help to identify the facial asymmetry due to difference in the condylar region the x-ray shows a tennis racket radiographic lines of posterior mandible so this uh, tennis racket radio opaque lines it is typically associated with odontogenic odontogenic myxoma so these radiographic fi- uh, findings they are seen on dent- uh, dental x-rays uh, that are characterized uh, characterized by fine curvy linear calcification that resembles a string of a uh, racket patient visited a dental clinic with a complaint of swelling in the mandibular region on radiograph it shows a onion peel appearance so a onion peel appearance it is typically associated with the osteomyelitis so gary's osteomyelitis it is a type of chronic osteomyelitis that leads to uh reactive new bone formation so this this appearance is known as onion peel appearance so that results as response to the chronic infection or irritation in the jaw bone so this onion skin appearance it results from the thickening of the periosteum and the formation of alternating radio opaque light and radio uh, radio opaque dark and radio lucent layers on the bone surface so that creates a laminated appearance which of following is characteristic uh, radiographic feature of osteosarcoma so the feature so imagine looking at a x ray of bone affected by osteosarcoma you can see uh, instead of smooth or normal bone structure you would see something like rays of light they are radiating outwards from central point just like rays of sun so this sun burst pattern it is a hallmark of it is a hallmark of the osteosarcoma so this uh, sunburn appearance is due to the aggressive and destructive nature of osteosarcoma where the cancellous bone cells they grow rapidly and disrupt the normal bone structures a male visited to the dental clinic following a road traffic accident if you are suspecting a bilateral condylar fracture the best uh, projection would be the opg the radiographic characteristic unique local radio lucency they are seen in all of following except except on the answer is giant cell granuloma uh, it is not typically characterized by unilocular radio lucency it presents as multilocular radio lucency it is a non neoplastic lesion a patient with a chief complaint of reddish discoloration of maxillary left central incisor has a history of trauma so periapical radio radiograph show a small radio lucent uh see in the pulp chamber so this one this condition is uh, it is internal resorption so in response to the inflammation or irritation specialized cells called osteoclast they become activated 
तो ऑस्टियोग्लास्ट वुड ब्रेक डाउन द बोन और रिजॉर्व द बोन सो द ऑस्टियोग्लास्ट दे स्टार्ट टू रिजॉर्व द डेंटीन फ्रॉम विद इन द पल्प चैम्बर अलॉन्ग द इनर वॉल्स ऑफ द रूट केनाल सो वाइड फॉर्म विद इन द टूथ सो cavity that is created by osteoclastic activity it is then filled with the granulation tissue that is combination of inflammatory cells and blood cells so this tissue can be seen as a pinkish hue within the cavity on radiographic image so trauma to tooth such as blow to mouth can damage the pulp tissue leading to inflammation and subsequent uh, subsequent resorption so the answer is internal resorption so given the patient history and radiographic finding internal resorption is the most likely explanation for the symptoms and the radiographic appearance a 20 year female patient radiograph show a radiolucent area surrounded by apices of mandibular anterior teeth which are vital so the answer would be a periapical cemental dysplasia so this condition is characterized by changes in the bone near the tooth apices that leads to radiolucent area the teeth involved are vital it is more common in females and mandibular anterior region whereas this condense condensing of teeth is seen as appears as dense area around the tooth apices and not the radiolucent area whereas a and b they can occur in non vital teeth a diacom a standard recognize, recognize which of following so diacom it is a special language for medical images so when your chest x ray is taken it is saved in the form of diacom images or diacom format so the answer would be c so dicom ensure that the medical devices like x ray machine ct scan mri machine they can talk to each other it's like, it is just like making sure everyone is speaking the same language so that uh, they can work together uh, seamlessly so dicom it makes it possible for your x ray and other medical images to be shared read and understood by different doctors and equipment no matter where you go for medical care so necessity for sharing information between imaging uh, devices would be your answer what is advantage of ccd imaging over psp dental imaging uh, so when patient it undergo x ray in a dental office using a ccd or cmos sensor the image is kept electrically electronically and immediately sent to computer screen so the dental professional he can view and assess the x ray image for diagnostic purpose whereas the uh, psp dental imaging in which a phosphor plate it is used to capture the x-ray image after the x-ray exposure the phosphor plate it needs to be removed from patient mouth and processed in a special reader to reveal the image so this processing steps take time and can results in delay before the image it is available for the review so the advantage of ccd dental imaging is immediate image acquisition and display so that is that is your answer the higher rate of cell division and differentiation of hemopoietic stem cells account for higher incidence of the leukemia leukemia it is a type of cancer that affects the blood and bone marrow 
So here you will see uncontrolled production of which cells? WBC. In the early stages of development, so these cells would divide rapidly and abnormally, abnormally. So that would lead to higher incidence of leukemia. So answer would be leukemia. Uh, what is the recommended treatment to regain function of muscles and mastication after radiation? It's the exercise program. So the radiation therapy, it can lead to inflammation and fibrosis of in the head and neck region affecting the muscles of mastication uh, and cause limitation in the mouth opening and muscle function. So uh, we recommend exercise programs and physical therapy to help the patient improves in the muscle function, reduce the inflammation and enhance the range of motion. So that is done uh, uh, to reduce the inflammation. Improve the muscle function. Which of following radiographic view is known as occipital mental projection? It's the PA view maxilla, also known as Waters view. So that is commonly used to view the maxillary sciences. During cell division, which phase is least sensitive to radiation? The answer would be S phase. Among the phases of cell cycle, the S phase is least uh, sensitive to radiation. The order of uh, the sensitivity order is M phase, that is G2, G1 and S phase. So S phase, remember it is least sensitive to irradiation so during the s phase uh, the dna synthesis and replication they are ongoing the making cells less vulnerable to radiation damage compared to, compared to the other phases the emulsion component of x-ray film it is made up of it is made up of Silver bromide. So the sil emulsion it have two principal component. Uh, silver halide grains and vehicle matrix. So silver halide it is primary silver bromide. The parameter of CBCT uh, that determines the number of shades of gray available to display the attenuation, it's the bit, uh, it's the bit depth. Imagine you are coloring a picture and you have, uh, you have a set of crayons with different shade of grays. So if you have only a few shades, your picture might look less detailed, but you have many shades, you can add more suitable differences making your picture more accurate and lifelike. So in CBCT bit depth, it works similarly. A higher bit depth means there are more shade of gray available to represent the different density in the scanned area. So that will make the image more detailed. So that would help uh, that would allow the uh, healthcare professional to see and analyze the structure uh, uh, structures more precisely. So a higher bit depth, it is generally better for creating high quality CBCT images. So the answer would be A.